So now we want to decide if an entire molecule is polar or nonpolar, not just the bonds. So the first thing you're going to do, okay, first thing you always want to do is check to see if the molecule has any polar bonds. So here's three molecules, and in the first one, if you notice, all of the elements are exactly the same. So there's no polar bonds in there. So this molecule has to be nonpolar. It can't be polar if none of the bonds are polar, okay? For CO2, there's two polar bonds, um, and oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So there's a polar bond there and a polar bond there, okay? So this might be polar. We don't know. There's another step to look at. Here, there's a polar bond and a polar bond, okay? So this, these two might be polar. We don't know yet because there's one more thing to look at. So they might be polar or they might be nonpolar. It all depends on their geometry. So if there are polar bonds present, the next thing we have to do is look at the shape or the geometry, okay? And what we're going to do is try to see, do the dipoles cancel out, okay? So the way this works is if you look at CO2 here, there's a dipole here and a dipole here, right? The oxygens have the higher electronegativity, so each oxygen is pulling the electrons toward itself. The one on the left is pulling them to the left, and the one on the right is pulling to the right. Can you see that those two arrows exactly cancel each other out? If I were pulling a rope to the right and you were pulling a rope to the left with exactly the same amount of force, the rope wouldn't move. Okay, so in this case we say that the dipoles are canceling. They have no overall effect. So the dipoles cancel. So we say that the, op the uh, molecule is nonpolar. Okay, there's no overall effect of those dipoles. Here I've got a dipole here and a dipole here. Now this is a little different because they're both acting to the right. Okay, if you push on a book to the right and I push on a book to the right, those pushes don't cancel out, right? They add up to a bigger push. So we say that these dipoles do not cancel. Okay. And when they don't cancel, that means there's overall a dipole, a big di a positive side and a negative side, and we say that the molecule is polar. So anytime the dipoles cancel, it's nonpolar. When they don't cancel, it's polar. And it depends on the geometry. So what we're going to do is look at each of the geometries and try to figure this out. So let's look at the bent geometry. Okay, There's a dipole towards oxygen. Okay, Now do these two dipoles cancel out? If I were pushing, we're, they're both pushing upward. So if, can you see that they don't exactly cancel out? That this object would move kind of up that way a little bit? So this is a polar molecule. Okay, I can help you figuring out dipoles later if you're having a little trouble imagining it. We'll look at the, the models and figure it out. So some other geometries, right? Pyramidal. Can you see how all of these dipoles are acting kind of upward so they don't cancel? So pyramidal things tend to be polar. Okay. Can you see here, though, for trigonal planar? They're all exactly the same angles apart, 120. Um, if we all kind of pulled, three people all pulled on that S at once, it wouldn't move. Okay, and Trigonal things tend to be nonpolar because these dipoles are canceling out. Okay, T-shaped, I got an up and a down, which seem to cancel but I've got an off to the right that's not canceling with anybody, so this is going to be polar. Okay, Tetrahedral, can you see that these are all exactly the same angle apart, that 109.5 degrees? These are all going to cancel and this is going to be nonpolar. Okay, same thing with square planar. Can you see how all of these things are canceling each other out? This is going to be nonpolar. Seesaw, on the other hand, the up cancels out with the down, but then I've got these two kind of off to the right, and there's nothing over here. So these do not cancel, and seesaw tends to be polar. Okay, trigonal bipyramidal, I don't know if you can tell, but 
top and bottom, bottom cancel, and then these three around the middle all cancel each other out. So trigonal bipyramidal is very symmetrical, and it's nonpolar. Square pyramid, on the other hand, this cancels with that, that cancels with that, but there's nothing down here to cancel with the one on top. So square pyramid is polar. Octahedral, again, very symmetrical. Top and bottom cancel. These two cancel. These two cancel. And this is nonpolar. So that was a little overwhelming and fast. So here's a summary for you. If the terminal atoms are different, okay, so the central atom is the atom in the middle, and the terminal atoms are all the atoms that are attached to the middle atom. If they are different, the molecule is always polar. Okay, if the atoms are different, then they can't cancel out, and it's always polar. So the trick is, what if all of the terminal atoms are the same? Well, it's polar if it's bent, pyramidal, T-shaped, seesaw, or square pyramid. Okay, and it's nonpolar if it's linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, square planar, trigonal bipyramidal, and octahedral. Okay, these guys are very symmetrical, and the other ones are not. Okay, in this case, all of the dipoles cancel. Okay, so these are your nonpolar ones, and these are your polar ones. And we'll look at this with some models and see if we can make it make even more sense for you.